All right, fitting introduction for our next guest here, one of our favorites on the Dom Giordano Show, the Democrat nominee for mayor in Philadelphia. Sherelle Parker is uh, back with us on Talk Radio 1210. Sherelle, welcome. Congratulations. Dan and Dom, thank you all so very much for having me. And thank you, thank you. I'm super excited. Now, my only gripe is, and I know you have great dentists, I had Dr. Benz, my guy, on speed dial that our listeners know. We would have been over there in the Batmobile, right there in the back room, and you would have been able to give that speech. I know to stop you, it must have been like somebody hit you with a two-by-four there. You know what? I appreciate your describing it because that is the level of intensity uh, that I felt. No one knows what that pulsating uh, was like, but uh, hey. Uh, we got through it, uh, and I am super excited. And listen, I do in a very serious way uh, want to say to you, Dom, and, and, and Dan, and to your entire listening audience, thank you so very much um, for giving uh, my campaign consideration. I don't care who you voted for, but the fact that I was able to share my vision for the city via this show, via the two uh, of you. Um, it is something that I will never forget. And it is also a perfect example um, for anyone who is attempting to judge a book by its cover. Sometimes you have to go with your gut, remember our humanity, even if we agree to disagree on some issues, but we listen to each other. And Dom, I will never forget that you gave me that opportunity. Well, we'll never forget that you came on because I, I was telling Dan, uh, we'll get to the policy part, but what the national people, and they couldn't know, one of the overwhelming qualities is your spirit, is your joyousness in this campaign. Even when going back and forth over the issues, and I know deep down that is a winning thing over long years. Uh, my wife said to say that too, because that's what galvan galvanizes her uh, with you. It's apparent, and sometimes uh, it's natural too. I mean, maybe some candidates can't do that. I think that won a lot of people over. They want that optimism in a mayor. Wow, Dom, to hear you, uh, to hear you say that, um, while well, I didn't expect this to be a therapy session, but I don't mind sharing it with you and or the listening audience, I want you to know that there were several uh, quote-unquote experts uh, who said to me before I resigned to run that I should uh, be a certain way and act a certain way to appeal to different constituencies. And I'm talking about, you know, I'm running the spectrum. I don't care if you're talking about from left all the way, far mm -hmm. left all the way, far right down. They were telling me I had to be a certain way. But what I learned on the trail, and for this, I thank Philadelphians. Um, I said, listen, no, Philadelphia wants authenticity. They don't want political correctness. They want a mayor to, to say uh, what he or she means and, and to mean uh, what he or she says. And I'm just going to be uh, myself. And, and, and Dom, that's going to make some people uncomfortable. You know, I heard a lot of people say, oh, she's not compassionate enough. And, you know, uh, you know she, she could say this a certain way. I have to be myself. And I, again, thank the listening audience, no matter who they voted for, for giving me uh, a shot. I just appreciate that. Uh, the, the national, I saw you with Tapper and some others, and they've had me on. So thank you to talk about what I thought. And I said that you knew in your heart, and I believe this too, it's not that strange that in communities like where I live and where you were contiguous the first time we talked about that, People yeah. do want a uh, police presence, and it is doable to have police that connect with the community. That's your uh, community policing and walking the beat and things of that nature. But that uh, Terry stops are constitutional. One of your opponents just said they're never constitutional. I, you know, I wish I was in some of those debates. I were the moderator with the two of you. Because I would have had it out there once and for all and let people hear it. doesn't have to be a fierce fight about stop, so-called stop and frisk. And you're on the right side of it with Supreme Court cases. It's another tool in the toolbox. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And 
I'm talking about b- before the campaign, when I introduced the plan, uh, during the campaign, and even now afterwards. Uh, it is this, uh, you know, folks want me to run away from my support of, of, of Terry Stops. Listen, law enforcement has to have reasonable uh, suspicion and just cause to know that a crime has been committed, will be committed, or is actively uh, being committed. And uh, Terry Stops are that tool. I will not um, shy away from or cower to anyone who says that they don't think that that is a tool that law enforcement should have at their disposal. Um, I would dare say to you that I am still unapologetic about letting you all know that if it's God's will and I can successfully make it through this general election, the public safety and health of our city will be my number one priority. And we're going to use every local, state, and federal tool available to make sure Philadelphians uh, can literally uh, see and feel that, Dom. Everybody, I don't know if they've said it to you, Dom, but I've been getting, you know, a lot of folks saying, yeah, well, look at the dismal 27 percent turnout we had uh, last yes. week with all of you running and all of those ads that's terrible and I, I said guess what you know i i agree but um i i look at it and i think it's apathy i think it's frustration i think it's anger i think philadelphia is tired of going into a booth pushing a button and participating in elections and they say what in the hell in my life has changed and um, I will dare say, because you've gotten me closer to the opportunity, we're going to see some changes that we can see, touch and feel in our neighborhood. That's why, however you came, it's in your personality, too. It's in mine, but probably even in yours. And you've had success. One of the things people need to see is a cleaner Philadelphia. You got that. The greener, too, but the cleaner. And when you're on my show talking about 24 hours a day, I believe it. And if Philadelphians see something like that early on, they're going to rally yes. to it. They'll rally. Well, Dom, it's interesting. It's interesting. I was going to have to tell Aunt Brenda that you just, my Aunt Brenda, that you just said that because she says, now, baby, what you have to do is we have to see it. We And, and I'm not talking about people in one section of the city. I'm talking about all neighborhoods. I say, Auntie, I am telling you the first thing that we are going to do, and guess what? Um, and I haven't said this publicly, so it's the first time I've said this and your listening audience will hear it first. We are already working on it, okay? Um, I think you'll see um, on the legislative agenda um, moving. I, I think our our executive branch and, and Governor Josh Shapiro and his team, I think in our, our state Senate and Senator Vincent Hughes, his team, our speaker, Speaker McClinton and Appropriations Chair um, uh, Harris, they're already thinking about how we move forward together. So not an I, Dom. That's another thing that's extremely important. We are doing it. My ego is not such that um, I don't suffer from illusions of self-grandeur, right? I understand that I'm, I'm just a woman. I'm not a superwoman. And I can't get anything together, get anything done without all of us working together. And I'm talking about Democrats and Republicans. You know, I got my butt kicked. You know, uh, some people, oh, she, you know, she's not even really a Democrat. You know, she's she's too conservative. I said, well, listen, you can say whatever it is that you want to say, but I work with Democrats and Republicans because my job is going to be to deliver and no one is getting in the way of that. I don't care who you are, but we're going to deliver for our people in this city. Well, I hope you make your aunt the chief of staff. I like her style <laughs> because she's congratulating you and telling you at the same time, I'm holding you accountable and we all need that. And, uh, uh, that's a great thing. I have to ask, I didn't know it during the campaign, and I saw you various times, the orange, the wearing of orange. Any particular reason? So aside from it being uh, my my favorite color, I love bright colors. Uh, they they look good. I like them <laughs> down with my skin tone, right? So the orange and yellows and bright blues, like since I was even a teenager, you know how you sort of kind of like – find, you know, your own style and what mm-hmm. you like. Very, very early on in my life, um, I found that colors match because of my dark complected skin. So they, I like colors. However, I am also, this is the secret for everyone, I am also a Lincoln University alum. Oh, okay. And our colors are orange and blue. 
And so it, it definitely was a reflection of not just my love for Orange, but I really wanted to um, rep Lincoln University where I learned so much. You know, I'm a first generation uh, college oh, graduate yes. Uh, yes. in my family. And that that played a, a super huge role. But guess what? I can tell you, and this is no exaggeration. How about a whole lot of my friends and just women in general I know are like, Sherelle, you know, you're having me look at orange now. I'm buying some orange clothes. So, like, I like that. I think we're going to start a Philly thing, particularly for women where we wear a lot of orange. I am a big fan of women in the solid color. I got to tell you, from where I'm looking at it, that is a winning combination. I uh, I, to I told Dan, 99% there, there's only one thing as a former educator, and I still do a lot of stuff. I got to pick your brain on the year-round school. I know the thought process there. A parent, is that mandatory or would parents decide it? Well, one, we definitely have to allow parents along with community. There are stakeholders to have a say. But I also want the listening audience to know I was not talking about year-round uh, schooling to sit in the traditional okay. classroom with our traditional academic instruction. But all of those additional, when I was in school, we called them like electives, right? Um, in, in this instance, when you hear me talking about workforce development, uh, you know, our students being trained for all industries that are thriving here, life sciences and biotech, the building trades in our schools. Um, again, I made people laugh and they were like, yeah, you sound like a dinosaur. When I talked about, I had home economics. I had wood shop. I had carpentry and metal shop. Um, they're like, Sherelle, that was so long ago. But I found out I wasn't good at those things, um, <laughs> Dom. Yeah. And, and, and listen, when, the only way that I knew that I was yes. terrible, you know, was because I got exposed to it. Our kids haven't had that option. And we will in the school district of Philadelphia. So I look forward to also, it's not just traditional teachers. We, we have to welcome the private sector into our educational uh, structure and us not doing that. I don't care. Our council member, Alan Dom and I, um, if there was uh, anything that, you know, he was very aggressive in talking about, it was that financial literacy piece. That is essential if we're trying to put people on the path to self-sufficiency so that they can get in a place where they don't need anything from government, you know, uh, in order to survive, except to pay their taxes on time, right? <laughs> but to make a living and take care of, yes. their, of their families. We want people self-sufficient, home ownership, like all of those things. Um, we want to make sure that that kind of activity is available, but definitely we would um, have to have parental uh, buy-in. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to give a, a Shout out to Superintendent Watlington. He and I um, have had some uh, very informal, a uh, very informal uh, conversations, and I was I've been very impressed, uh, Dom and, and Dan. You, I think I've been around you enough to know, uh, for you to know that I'm not. I don't get excited when I just like listen to what people say. Right. I, I'm the kind of person where I'll sit back and say, uh huh, I heard what he or she said, but let's see what they do. And if they have a cur the courage to like make tough decisions. Wait a minute. You and say, watch, you, you say that, but you, you really, really like Dan. What the heck has he ever done here, Sherelle? Come on. Hey, listen, <laughs> my, my experience there, my experience there was made much better because Dan took care of me, Dan. So thanks, Dan. I Aww. appreciate that. Thank you, Sherelle. Well, Sherelle, is there a new website? Where do people go with the uh, general election campaign now? Well, listen, right now, I want you to stay with me at www.sherelleparker.com. I want you to know that we are definitely working into shifting our structure uh, right now because it has to be uh, much more interactive. A lot of people are sending us recommendations, so we want to receive you. The only thing I ask is that you remember that I, along with my dynamic team, we're human, we're not robots. So we're working to get that structure okay. in order right now, but you can still reach me through our uh, traditional uh, website. In addition to that, Dom, uh, please remember that I am the Democratic nominee. I am not the mayor elect. We have to go through the general election process. Uh, my former colleague, Council Member David O, is a very formidable uh, opponent. I look forward to fully engaging. I'm not taking my foot off the gas. 
it's this campaign uh, election is not over. And so we have to still raise money uh, and do everything that we did in the primary. And I'm still going to try to win over votes. But now I get to try to appeal to Republicans, to independents. I don't care what party you are. Our goal is for you to become a part of our team and our broad based coalition. We've got to make it even larger right now. And there is room for everyone under the Sherelle Parker test. You got that. Sherelle, thank you. What a joy to have you back. Thank you. Glad you're in good health and ready to go. Thank you. Have a good one.